Hi there, hope you are doing all right. So it seems like people are interested in how Ryzen performs in uh, music production. Uh, I think you will be happy to know that I have a project here that is pretty heavy on soft synths, VSTs and uh, plugins, effects and everything. The project is finished, mastered, everything. It's ready to go. It's called uh, Little Waveforms. I guess you want to have a little preview of it so we can check it out here, main uh, breakdown here here and to the just to let you know what to expect and everything here is playing in real time there are no frozen tracks or anything Okay, we can go to the climax here, and uh, I can say that the Morg drone here is that's kind of a frozen track because I recorded it from my synthesizer. But except for the Morg synthesizer, everything else is playing in real time. So yeah, we have a little melody there, we go into another break here and we just change up the melody a little bit uh, over here. So yeah, today we are going to go through this track, just see it track for track here, what kind of instruments I use, what type of effects and everything. Just show you kind of some of my mixing decisions. I'm not able to go into every little tiny detail, then I guess we would be sitting here all night. If you think that's a good idea, you can uh, like the video. By the way, if you want some of my templates, you can check out my website on uh, biokeep.com. I have a few of my Ableton Live templates available for download there. Also a Logic project. Not this template you're seeing here now, but the other templates. You can go there and take a look if you want. Okay, so let's just dive into the project here. A trans project like this needs a kick and a bass, and that's the top part of this project. It's a group with a kick and a group with a sub bass. The kick is just a basic kick sample from a library somewhere. I did some uh, EQing on, on the kick. I have removed some frequencies I uh, didn't like. So if I turn off the EQ, I think it sounds a little tighter with some cuts here. Then underneath the kick we need a sub bass and the sub bass is being played by Serum and the settings on Serum is 2x and we have two oscillators here. Not that heavy on the CPU, this one. Used a preset I found on Splice and added a few effects like uh, built-in saturation in Ableton Live, some EQing here on the sub bass, and of course LFO tools so we can uh, give room for the kick. So if I turn off LFO tool, you don't re you don't really hear it, but uh, you can feel it. So that's the kick and the bass and everything else here in red is percussion like uh, loops, hi-hats and things like that. I have a little trick I found on Reddit actually. I have a loop here. Uh, if you take a listen to it now, this is kind of the standard uh, how, it, how it sounds like when it's not processed. But if you add a vocoder to it, you can kind of change the sound a little bit. It 
kind of get, gets a little bit more bright and uh, yeah, just think it fits better in the mix. This is a trick I saw on uh, Reddit actually. And I did the same on loop number two here. Added a vocoder on it. It kind of sounds like some kind of saturation. All of the red tracks here are just samples, so they don't really demand that much of the CPU. Then we get to the mid bass. Sounds like this. So in the mid bass, we have three tracks. We have one being played by Spire, just using one of the default presets with some EQing, actually take off uh, quite a lot of the low end here, around 202. With the sub bass, you kind of get it, get why. <clears throat> you don't want all of that low end to clutter up the low end, then uh, it will sound, uh, it won't sound good at all. And then we have another track here, it's called uh, Mog Bass. It's a recording from uh, the Mog synthesizer I have around here. It's just a standard waveform patch I made and did some changes to it. We have some delay, some uh, a utility to make it more mono after the delay then and EQing and LFO tool. Then I have a third track. It's also played by Spire. It's also a kind of baseline, baseline type of sound with some compression. And I'm going to explain this one. Some saturation, broken tube, EQ and LFO tool. So there's quite a lot of uh, effect chains on each and every track here. This thing I can, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to hear the difference here, but if I turn off these EQ3s here, and I turn it on again, The bass sounds a bit more rubbery. Uh, it's actually a trick I found uh, from another YouTuber. I'll uh, put a link in the video below so you can uh, find him. It's a really cool effect. You just take three EQ3s and you don't do anything on them. You don't change any settings, you just drag them in, use the default settings. Uh, the bass sound will sound more rubbery as with more EQ3s. So you can you can add like a few more and it it will it will in increase the uh, effect like so so yeah there's a lot of effects i guess i could uh, uh, use more sense and things of that sort and uh, try to think more cpu wise when i produce music but I, I really don't want to do that i just want to throw things in here i don't really think about the uh, cpu use and i i know that's a little bit uh, entitled thinking but uh, it's possible with this system so it's uh, yeah it's great then we get to the lead group mixing wise i did struggle a lot with and uh, I didn't really, I didn't really feel that I found a way so it could fit in the mix. So to be completely honest, I think I actually have too many synthesizers here. I have one Diva, I have one Spire, one Diva, one Diva, and one Serum. And underneath there, I have one Spire and also one Serum. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven synthesizers playing this melody. So as you can see on each and every instrument chain here, I have some effects like this, add some random velocity to the MIDI, compressor delay, EQing, compressor again, this is actually side chaining using the compressor and same on the lead number two here some EQing compressor some same here actually some Valhalla effects on lead three uh, 
And yeah, all of these add up and takes up a lot of CPU. It also makes it a little difficult to mix. So I, I made a group of these leads and I had to add some compression on this group. So I'm beginning with the glue compressor on the lead group. And then I also have some reverb using Valhalla Shimmer on the entire group. And I don't think I have so much here. It's just 19 on the mix. So it's just a little bit. And then as you can see here, I have an EQ where I take down a little bit of the high end because the high end, I think the high end was actually too bright. So if I, if I play the, let's say I play the lead, the bass and the sub bass and I turn off the EQ here and the fab filter thing here. So I think that was too harsh and too bright. That's why I added this EQ here on the lead group where I bring down some of the high frequencies. And then I added a multiband compressor from FabFilter here, just a tiny bit, where I also compress some of the high frequencies. In addition, I added the utility here and I filter everything below 150 hertz to mono. like so. And then a little bit of LFO tool to duck it. I've been experimenting a little bit with this. If I did too much here, it sounded weird. I can uh, try it here. Do you think I should have it there? Or maybe I should have it there. Do you like the pumping sound? I think it's, I don't, I'm not sure if I like it. Maybe we can have it there. If you like that popping sound, you can uh, share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. This is uh, layering. I have a lot of layers and the uh, problem with a lot of layers is trying to get the mix uh, sounding great without uh, taking over and everything. And that's why I think I'm not saying that I am an expert in this, but that's why I think you should uh, think in uh, cutting off frequencies you don't, you don't need. I did cut off some of the high end here. And again, on the base here, I did cut some actually hair. And if we go down here, we have the purple tracks. These are just samples. So these are wave files, not really demanding for the CPU to play back. Uh, some downlifter, uplifter, crash, white noise things like that. And then we have the uh, dark uh, red parts here. These are these are diva are playing in the in the breakdown here mostly. So these are pads and I have activated multicore on diva on uh, all of the diva instances. In addition to that, I have a Moog drone here where I recorded it from uh, from the synthesizer in this room. And we can just I can just show you how much the diva actually takes up in CPU here. So we were at about 30% uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's pretty good. 
But if we go into the main part here, let's see, uh, let's go here. So if you noticed it, the CPU here, don't mind in Norwegian language, it went to about 50%. But if you see the, uh, I know it's a little small text there, but if you see the CPU meter in Ableton Live, it goes to about, I think it was 70. Oh, it was around 80. So that's the audio buffer and that's kind of another CPU uh, measurement so the cpu meter in your ableton live project is not like your cpu meter in your system it, there are two different things this tells you if ableton uh, if i'm not mistaken you are welcome to correct me if i'm wrong but this tells you if you are within the ableton's li lives limit of handling audio and just to let you know i can just show you my setting has here i'm using 48 kilohertz i'm using asio drivers from the fireface usb audio interface and i'm using 256 uh, buffer size so that was a little bit of nerdy talk yeah as you can see here on almost every track here i have some kind of effects like uh, <laughs> actually i have sausage 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 fattener here yeah some saturation some included with stock plugins in ableton live i really like them valhalla shimmer lfo tool we also have a group with uh, 303s in the intro here And also I'm recording a video here with my camera while I'm playing back this audio project in real time and it's routing the audio in the PC and to OBS and everything. So it's uh, using a few CPU cycles on recording this video as well. Yeah, I'm uh, happy with the Ryzen system. At least uh, the plugins I use here, it works really well. I also experienced that the system became much more stable when I replaced my uh, Focusrite audio interface, the RME audio interface. I'm not sure why but that's just the way it is. So if you are planning of using a Ryzen system for a music production, I think you don't do anything wrong uh, going that route. I just want to say that I'm not a AMD fanboy or Intel fanboy. If let's say for one year, Intel comes out with a CPU that works uh, better than AMD products, I'm probably going to buy that. So it's it's just, I am I don't have any bias towards any, any of these. The CPU that gives good performance, it's, what I'm going to buy. So if you want to check out this track and download it, you, I think you can check it out on Bandcamp. I will have a link below to that. You can also download a mp3 file on my website. You can use this track as background music in your own YouTube videos. If you're streaming or anything, you can use it for free and you can even monetize the videos, but you do have to link uh, back to my website. You have to credit my website. All of the information is on my website on the link below. I also have a 16 inch MacBook Pro and I was thinking of placing the MacBook Pro besides this PC and open up this project on the 16 inch MacBook Pro and just see if it's able to handle it. If that's something you are interested in, you are welcome to subscribe or click like on the video. It at least sends me some signals that you're interested in it. And if you are a subscriber to this channel, I would like to give you a special thanks. I have reached over a thousand subscribers now. I didn't really think that was possible with the content I make here, but it seems like some of you guys are liking it so please continue doing that if you want and uh, let me know if there is something you want to see here and if you want to see more projects more templates and uh, things uh, like that i think uh, that's uh, all for today's video check the links below for templates projects audio files and yeah and i will see you in the next video bye bye